Welcome everyone to the start of my newest adventure, Stealing Speedruns. The concept is pretty simple. I scour the internet looking for games or categories for games that have not been run and I give them the old yoink. Now you may be asking yourself, Dylan, why would you do such a thing? And well, the answer is simple. I'm a bastard. I wanted to make the first episode of Stealing Speedruns something very special. So I decided to start with the game that created the concept. And that game is Dual Hearts for the PS2. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Dylan, what is Dual Hearts for the PS2? And that's a really good fucking question, because up until a couple of months ago, I didn't even know what it was. But anyway, let's head back to where the whole story begins. It all starts on my Twitch channel, which is at twitch.tv slash Dylan with a blankie. Go check that out. A lot of fun stuff. I play everything, baby. There I have a very specific point reward on my channel, which is by far the most popular of them all. It's this bad boy, the Game Redeem Reward. It's as simple as it sounds. Earn 50k channel points by watching and make me play whatever game you want. As if I don't play enough already. Enter Zelastic Mode. <laughs> God, that's so stupid. Bro, I'm so cringe. Alex here redeemed a game called Dual Hearts, and having never heard of it, I of course just said, Okay, I'll play it! I began searching for a copy of this game to find this particular game is selling for upwards of $100, which is a big no-no for my poor ass, so I borrowed a copy from the internet. Thanks, internet. And on my adventure I went. Starting the game was definitely a bizarre experience, as I'd never really played a game like it. Dual Hearts is a, well, it's a, um, platforming adventure collect-a-thon action JRPG. And that is the most accurate description you'll ever get. You play as Rumble, a treasure hunting adventurer who's trying to fill the void in his heart that only French, I mean treasure, can fill. He travels to Sano Island to find the ultimate treasure, and on his hunt he bumps into Tumble. This guy. And now, watch out, Banjo and Kazooie, because this team is fierce. The goal of the game is to find these keys to open doors in the main temple that will grant you new items to progress in the game. Oh, and did I mention you go into people's dreams? Not the dog! Anything but the dog! Don't break the dog, dog! Using Tumble, you can enter others' dreams and find these keys, but that's not the only thing you can find. There are also dream energies, which aren't good for much. There are 100 in the game, but you only need 20 to beat it. Gold Esamons, which you collect to get items, but only the first one is really useful. And finally, you can get these gold rings, which nets you optional upgrades. So pretty simple. Jump into the paintings, get the stars, fight bows- uh, um, shit. Jump into the dreams, get the dream energy, fight bows- Never mind, you get it. And that, my friends, is about the gist of the game. Um, but let's talk about how I got into the speed run. You see, Alex, who redeemed the game, was in chat the whole time I was playing and kept reminding me that there were no runs for this. And being the bastard I am, <laughs> and stealing a few world records before, eventually gave an Alex's goading and looked into it. And sure enough, there wasn't even a page for this game. And like a massive load of thick chocolate milk, it hit me. I had to run this, but there was a problem. Back to my original borrowed playthrough of Dual Hearts, I had major graphical glitches going on. So see, look at this, now you can't see these rings. Anytime you teleport from one dream to another, uh, inside of a dream, the- uh, the models deload. I don't know why. I actually played half the game the first time, not even knowing they were there. Which left me little option, but to get a copy of the game. Even though it was a dummy thick price. Thanks, Wada Games. And then from the heavens descended Alex himself, and he said unto me, Borrow my co- Oh wait, hold on, I'll do a voice thing for this. Borrow my copy, Dylan Senpai. And after he mailed me his physical copy of Dual Hearts, the race was on. After waiting a few days, I finally had the copy, and all I had to do now was plan a route. Which, I learned the hard way, is the hardest part of any speedrun. Typically, you can watch an already established route and just try to do it faster, but planning your own from scratch takes a lot of time. I mean, if you don't route correctly, someone can easily beat whatever time you throw down. And the worst part is this game had one guide on GameFAQs, and it's missing essential information to advance the plot, but we'll get to that. So here's the route I came up with over two sessions of playing Dual Hearts. Skip to the time step on screen if you want to avoid any spoilers for the plot, or you don't care about my route. Also, you can just watch the run for more details, as I won't explain every bit, just the path. As you start the game, simply skip the first cutscene and then do the two puzzles to your left and right. After this bit, you'll enter the first dream, which is basically one big tutorial. Finish the puzzles as normal, and when you fight the boss here, Mr. Moneybags, the best way to beat him is to charge spear attacks and hit him constantly. When you regain control, you head to your first trial, which is some simple block pushing, and once you reach the end, you get the yellow thing, which is a shield. 
Never used it. I kept forgetting it was there. And the shape will force you to go in his dream so he can teach you how to use this shield. Block the cannonball. Forget about that little slime right there and just grab the one dream energy here and immediately leave. And never do another tutorial again. Just that on the school bus. <laughs> Now you're gonna head straight to town and get hit with a barrage of thick, meaty plot, and enter Florence, the artist stream. Finish this stage as normal and grab every dream energy you can on the way to the end. They will be important. You should have five by the time you fight the boss. This boss is super easy. All you have to do is charge attack after he spins, and that's it. Collect the key, grab the health upgrade, and the tummy up before you leave. Now straight back to the temple for the next trial. On the way, you'll have another healthy dump of plot and characters. Now the blue trial is where you'll have an ice puzzle in the way. After clearing this, you'll get the draw card, which is used for the most infuriating parts of this game, and the run. Tell that sheep to beat it. <laughs> Like that's stupid. I actually wrote that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit. Tell that sheep to beat it. Now straight into this fucking nerd's dream so we can find his glasses. By the end of this dream, we want eight dream energies, which is no easy feat. When we fight the boss here, we want the draw card to absorb a yellow Essamon since he's weak to shock. This will be our first incredibly tedious fight, as every boss from here on out will now be. Once he's beat, grab the key and the upgrades, and it's back to the temple for a fill up the bucket and put out the torches trial, which grants us the blue treasure, which is get out of here, sheep! Bombs? Mines? I don't know, they explode. Now we need to set up some story flags here. So we head to the coast, talk to the pirate guy, then we pass where God is, and grab this, uh, this bag and bring it to Santa Claus. Yep, that's right, I read that right. Bring it to Santa Claus. And head to the beach. Hopefully it's daytime and you can enter his dream now. Progress as usual and by the what the fuck is that? Now by the end you should have 12 dream energies and make sure you draw a red Essamon before the boss. Now, fight the snowman, which is a pretty easy fight. Dodge, ice breath, blow up the legs, and light him on fire. And with this, the Snow family is now fatherless. We grab the juicy spoils and head to the temple. Now to enter the next treasure section, you need minimum 10 dream energies. Told you we'd need them. We do some of the jumpies and we gain the Arbalest. Pretty much a crossbow. And now, I messed up here in my original run because you need to enter Mr. Handlebar Mustache's dream here to trigger a sequence later that actually just has nothing to do with him. So first, I suggest going into his dream and fighting this one boss. You need to ride Tumble and dash into Mr. Handlebar Mustache, also known as Toma, to save him and then beat this boss. Leave, grab the broken sword, and move on to our next main dream, which is the tree girl, Lillian. This is by far one of the weirdest dreams. No, I refuse to elaborate. Now this is where we start menuing. At this point, the audio in your game should be heavily desynced from the fast menuing, making this fight even worse. This boss Casey is the absolute epitome of tedium. He has these auras around him, and you have to hit them with the proper element to destroy them. So you will be pausing, pulling out your card, switching your arbalest and spear a lot. I recommend the spear for this fight, as its vertical nature will allow the most hits, and after a long, long battle, you should head back to the temple. Our next trial is climbing a bunch of walls, and you just have to remember the routes to climb. Once in the treasure room, you get the hook shot, the, the, the snake fang, which allows you to grab stuff from a distance. This is where doing Mustache's dream early saves you time, because now you can go to the bridge at night and speak to Chiffon. If you don't do Toma's dream, she will not show up at all. After this, speak to McTube by the fountain at night and fight your doppelgangers, and immediately after, head back to the hotel and enter Chiffon's dream, which is, in my opinion, one of the hardest parts of the run, because we have a lot of really precise platforming and a nasty audio desync. Ah! I couldn't even see that. How about that fucking audio desync, though, huh? At least the boss fight is easy. Now, by the end here, we should have gotten one more dream energy, totaling us at 13. And we won't get a key, because she doesn't fucking have one. Here is exactly where the sequence of story events gets very confusing. My original playthrough had me lost here, because there are very specific things you must do, and that one guide didn't detail it properly. Listen closely. Head to the beach, talk to Chiffon, enter Chiffon's dream again, Complete the new dream, get one dream energy before leaving, and have yourself at 14. Now after this dream, go to the beach again, talk to her one last time, and this will allow you to finally do the next key quest, which is in Meg's dream. Head to the dog god, and you will see Meg pass out. 
you can immediately enter her dream, where we can grab one more dream energy, and then go into Hannah's dream. Complete this section as normal, and we should grab enough dream energies to be at 20. And we won't need any more again. Here, we will fight the boss, which is a pretty easy one. Just long, grapple the enemy, beat him up, throw him into the fire. Do this a few times and he should die. And this part of the run is actually where I got some insane luck. You see, when Rumble eats a black Essamon, he chokes, and you can kick him to stop him from choking. This activates a rare chance for him to spit out an item. And I mean rare. He can spit out an entire health upgrade, or any common drop item from the grass. But for some reason at this point, he dropped me a full revived gem that I didn't even know existed. is that what is that a resurrection no way this right here is the only reason i was even able to beat the final boss and you'll see why now we grab our upgrades and leave destination temple good thing we have 20 energies to get in this puzzle is just stacking boxes jumping to ledges pretty simple and for this we get the hammer the strongest weapon of the game at this point it's recommended to use this as your attack weapon from now on to level it up and hit our boy Sheep with another no tutorials. Don't make me tap the sign. But I'm lost and I need to know where. Straight to the beach at night and we can enter Emma's dream. Immediately jump off the level. Trust me, I'm a streamer. This takes us into Gregor's dream. Get through the puzzles and to the end as fast as possible and now we fight the boss. A water squid thing, uh, so just hit him with a shot card. He'll sink and whack him with your hammer a couple times and then dive after him and dash into him until he gets back up. Rinse and repeat, grab our items, bounce. Temple fire guiding puzzle grab gauntlet which will be used one time before the end of the game and we will be taken to the same dream from the beginning of the game with bonus content rush through and onto a fight with the queen her first phase can only be damaged by rumble second phase just swing her eggs back at her and beat her down third phase we fly and dash in her till she crumbles after this we talk to mctuv in the temple and we go into the final fight save if you aren't confident this is going to be the most difficult part of the entire run this is technically a six phase boss fight and it does not get any easier first phase is just the queen again keep hitting her over and over and she won't even be able to move and then after you get her down enough there's going to be a cutscene that you skip and there's a part where there's just no way to fight you just wait around until she hits you enough and move on to the second phase Nightmare. Here I just ran and spammed the Arbalest, and when his shield broke, charge attack with the Arbalest to stun him and grapple the mist, which will damage him. Do this over and over until the third phase. He will suck you into his body, and this will be a pretty easy phase too. Here we grapple the mist and hit it three times, grapple again before he attempts an attack. Rinse and repeat now for the fourth phase, which is just like the second, but he hits really, really hard if you get too close to him. Just use the same strategy as before and be careful not to get too close. Now the fifth phase will test you, as now you have to fight two mists. Grapple one, beat him mercilessly, and the other one will pelt you with unblockable attacks. The only thing you can do is keep healing and hope you're able to kill the one before the other kills you. Once one is down, you focus the other one down easily, just like the first time. Make sure to keep him alive and cut the grass around and recharge your Essamons to full before entering the final phase of the fight. If you've gotten here, congrats. You're very close. This phase is a flying phase, and if you have to land to recharge your Essamon, you've essentially lost. You will never recover as much as this boss will hit you for, and you have to recharge to be able to fly. Once you fly here, all you do is wait for him to shoot his laser and dash into it, which will auto you into him and you will be invulnerable the whole time you're dashing. And the revive gem here was the only reason I eventually won this fight, because this guy does insane amounts of damage. But once you get that last hit, congrats! You're done. This game was pretty brutal to run. Tedious bosses, convoluted story pass, and the audio desync really meshed together to make this a very difficult run. However, I recommend playing the game vanilla at least once because it's worth it really out there most of the time. This game is definitely a hidden gem for the PS2. It's hella fun and I highly recommend giving it a try. And I honestly had a lot of fun routing it. As stressful as it was, it was, you know, it was a challenge that I wasn't used to before. So it was something I could do. And it really inspired me to pursue even more runs like this. And after nearly six hours, I finally completed the first ever run of Dual Hearts for the PS2. With a final time of five hours, 56 minutes, and 28 seconds. 
I think the best part of this run was the fact that there wasn't even a page for it. So there was a whole process where I ran the game and then I had to submit the game to speedrun.com to make the page. And now I've got to make the rules and I'm moderate for it, which feels really cool. And I wish more people would run it. And after going back and watching the video of me running it, there's definitely a lot of cleaning up that can be done in that run. But that final boss and the RNG of getting a revive gem in the middle of the game might never happen to me again. So it kind of scares me from trying to run it, perfecting it. But who knows? Maybe I will run it again. Or maybe you can beat my time. All that matters is I've stolen yet another unclaimed world record, and there's many more for me to get. This run was the birth of the Dylan Percent name. And with three world records under my belt, I know that the sky's the limit. And there are other games out there beckoning for me to fill the void of their empty categories. And thus my journey begins to attain the ultimate Dylan Percent. Thanks for watching, guys. I really had a lot of fun making this video, and I wanted to thank a few people before I moved on. First off, I gotta thank Zelastimo, Zelastigmo. First off, I wanna thank Zelastigmo, or Alex, for mailing me his copy of the game, which I still have. And you'll never get it back. And also, for having me play the game in the first place, otherwise I might not have ever known about this. I gotta thank Georgie and Jorky, my uh, two mods on Twitch, who are able to keep chat under control. Keep them under control. My editor, Tumor, for, well, editing. And all the viewers on Twitch who are there to watch me achieve that feat. If you want to be part of the action next time, feel free to check me out at twitch.tv slash Dylan with a blankie where I run games sometimes. Hopefully I see you there and until the next run, keep an eye out for the next Dylan Percent. After waiting a few days, I finally had the copy and all I had to do now was plan a route. Wrote, wrote, a route, a route, I gotta plan a route.